Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, we'll recap a lot of things that we talked about over the last few weeks. Some new things. Um, I had Chinese food for breakfast, and I feel like I'm high on... I just looked up what are the effects of MSG. I don't always feel this way after Chinese food, but headaches, this and that, if you're highly sensitive to it. One said giddiness. I, I'm telling you, I, I was I, I looked it up before I, I, I started this video. I said, there's, I'm high on something. Obviously, I didn't smoke anything. I know I didn't take drugs this morning. I had a big plate of chicken uh, lo mein. And giddiness is there. It's listed. And I feel that's exactly the way I feel. Um, so with that being said, let's discuss some of the comments about... We'll go right to the Holy Grail <laughs> from giddiness, right to the Holy Grail. Uh, Matt, you have to be giddy to discuss that. Um, in the Holy Grail, um, what is the Holy Grail book chapter? Um, there were several, several comments, uh, that said it's the woman's Holy Grail, Matt, is the woman's womb. And, um, it came up quite a bit and I'm thinking as I'm reading them, I'm thinking, I hope you didn't just take this right from the Da Vinci Code. I mean, I hope there's, there's more to it than that. Um, uh, Matt, you are giddy. You can't get the smile off my face. It'll, it'll probably go away in a minute. I drank a, a lot of water and I just had one of these poison Diet Cokes, um, the woman's womb, it's a holy grail and the reproductive process. It's, I mean, I, I actually looked it up and there's not a whole lot. Of, well, I didn't spend hours in the Library of Congress. There's not a whole lot other than what is presented in uh, the Da Vinci Code. Hey, Czar, people want to say hi to you? Um, come on, man. Um, and I know, look, it obviously the Da Vinci Code got it from somewhere, but... The Holy Grail, um, what the not milk in this reality says or shows you over thousands of different forms of art and media that's been searched for. What's the what's the searching for? Your old lady's in the back room. What's the searching for? Why, why is the not milk presenting people searching a quest, a grail quest? Is that what we used to do on a Friday night? We went out in our early 20s, a grail quest? Really? Um, what's the searching for? Well, there ain't no old lady here in the back room, but you know what? Come on, the, the woman's womb. Come on, sir. Come on. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I, I don't, I don't see that. Um, when something is such a stuffed Lenin or a Humpty Dumpty, and it's so pushed in art and media by quote not milk for thousands of years, and um, it's not in the Bible uh, at all. It's so big and it's so prominent throughout the world it has a very very deep spiritual meaning a meaning you know that to, i'm not gonna we're not gonna get in the same old video again but um i mean why don't we just replay the, the dan brown uh, by the way um i was gonna say replay the scene from the da vinci code um but you know what's funny uh one part of research led to the other and this is typically you'll say you'll say you might not have known this but you'll say i'm not surprised there was a book in 1982 called, um, I don't know, I, I have to get the name for you, the, the something Bloodlines and the something, I, I don't know, I need to, let me let me see if I still have it up here. It's called uh, Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, Michael Baguette, but B-A-I, ba Bagent, Mike, Michael Bagent, 1982, The Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, with the idea that Mary Magdalene, um, gave well no yeah jesus and mary magdalene had a son or daughter that perpetuated the holy bloodline of jesus christ well like well that's what dan brown presented in the da vinci code well he stole it <laughs> it's just there's nothing original in the world i mean nothing new under the sun right there was a lawsuit the guy could you imagine he writes this holy blood and holy grail and then his girlfriend's like, let's go see the Da Vinci Code. It's like, that's my shit. That's stolen right from me. So um, it's the same exact thing in the Da Vinci Code where they present, they, they take it beyond the notion that it's a chalice or a cup or an object. They get people, at least p get people thinking about it a little bit differently, but it's just another uh, ninth inning hijack. Um, it's the royal bloodline, according to Dan Brown, the Da Vinci Code of Jesus Christ carried forward. And the legend and lore continues that that a royal bloodline um, settled in a region of France, which became, uh, one theory says, the Merovingian dynasty. 
you know, which relates to with the Merovingian, all that conspiracy relates to uh, Princess Princess Di. And, um, you know, supposedly when that happened in the uh, Pont, Pont Alma tunnel, the Bridge of Souls tunnel, I mean, we should, do you guys want to just stop talking about serious things and just go back and kind of make fun of the old conspiracy? I know it's, it's, it's not a worry about your, maybe we should do it once a week. We can do the serious uh, understandings and worry about your self activities in part two, the work and overcoming what we need to overcome in this reality. Maybe once a week we can go back and I'd love to just, I, it's fascinating to me, you know, not that it's what's presented, but how the, how this reality coordinates such conspiracy. It, it proves fake world. Um, the Princess Diana thing, Princess Di, by itself the name, it, it works into the the whole legend and lore of the conspiracy. I, I could do a whole two hours on it. It's, it's fascinating, but we won't do it here. The um, She dies, it was the 13th pillar. Come on. The 13th pillar. Matt, what do you really think happened? I, I It could be David Bowie Island. I, I We'll talk about it some other time. We'll, we'll have fun with it some other time. I think YouTube will allow me to talk about the conspiracy of Princess Diana. Just by what I said there, there's probably going to be a, a, a marquee box or a box directing you the real information <laughs> under this video. Giddy from the MSG? Yeah. So the 13th ton, the 13th pillar, come on, come on, sir, it's a joke. And all the, you know, the conspiracy that went along with it, the Bridge of Souls tunnel. Point is, Matt, what were you straying to? That's supposed to be one of the key sites of the Merovingian dynasty. Anyway, guys, it's I'm pretty, I'm, I'm very clear on what my personal interpretation is of the Holy Grail. Um, the womb, a woman's womb. No, no. Uh, if the woman's, let me tell you what, some of the, some of the women I've, you know, I haven't had a girlfriend for quite some time, but some of the women I've been involved with, I can tell you right now, the womb or the reproductive parts, it ain't no Holy Grail. I can tell you that firsthand might be different with your woman or sorry, if you prefer, if you have, if you've made another choice, I don't mean to offend anyone. But it ain't that. Uh, what I've been in, involved with was <laughs> want no holy grail. <laughs> it was holy. They gave me holy hell. That's so why that, that you're Matt. You're afraid to have another relationship. I am afraid, terrified, mystified, mortified by you. That's from um, a beautiful mind. Anyway, guys, let me see what else there is to talk about here, and maybe I'll I'll, I'll uh, not be as high when I come back. Let's do a quick stalled century update. Uh, I'll give you mine in just a second. If you have any stalled century updates, please put in the comments. You know, I don't pay too much attention to the screen or the outer ring of reality, although I do watch some of the movie reviewer uh, YouTube sites. Other than that, I, I don't. Just in that one area, I, you could say I stay in touch with the outer ring or the screen. So if you know that they're going to recycle Baywatch <laughs> with David Hasselhoff or make it into a Broadway play, which you know they're capable of doing stuff like that. I mean, it seems like a joke at first, but when you really think about it, Baywatch, the Broadway production, they're ca totally capable of that. Maybe they already did it. I don't, I don't know, but if you have things like that, please put it in the comments. Mine is a recycling of the 1980, early 80s movie, The Abyss. Um, I thought they were bringing it back in theaters for a few weeks, but it's a special event. One thing I looked at recently said... One day only. <laughs> Make sure you take the wife and kids out. Um, I'm at, I am. I'm giddy. Man. I don't. I don't. I'm. I don't know. I don't, I've had so much Chinese food in my life, guys. I don't know if it's if it's just not that I'm at the breaking point, but there's the MSGs want one thing going on. There's some other things. I know how to handle my my Chinese food. All right, I've had enough of it, and it, I've been going to the same place for about twelve to fifteen years. So I don't think that's just it. Um, you know, whatever, uh, guys, the abyss, it has Ed, the movie with Ed, Har Ed Harris, Mary something or other Ma Masterson or whatever her name is. Was she also in, um, Robin Hood, not men in tights, the one with, uh, Kevin Costner one day they make a big deal out of it because they're putting it out in 4k. Oh, they can't, you know, you want to say they can't make a good movie, but you, they can, of course they can make a good movie. It's just they, they hold it back. Hey, Zara, they just hold it back. Um, 
I, it, it's part of stalled century. Um, you know, I don't really, uh, I, I need to really pause and wrap my head around, you know, what, what are they going to do with movies? They can't get any worse. They can't possibly get any worse without the, even the dumbest on the ship of fools noticing. Uh, it's the same things over and over again. Um, the, the, they're buzzing right now. The movie reviewers and some of the sites that I, I watch are buzzing about how what's planned, what Disney's saying is planned for Star Wars is, seems to be more of the same woke messaging, <laughs> social justice warrior crap. Um, I mean, it's proven now, proven. It's not even a conspiracy anymore. It's proven they don't need to make money. I mean, you, if you keep doing the same things that people hate, and we're not going to follow the cat around anymore, guys, sorry. If, they keep, if you keep doing things that people obviously hate and don't want to go see, like the recent flops of the Marvels, or Miss Marvel, or whatever it's called, the Marvels, and these, these themes keep in, being inserted in movies, and if it happened for a six to month to 12 month period, um, people like my friend Tony, or those that try to defend this reality, um, Tony, I hope you're watching. Please give me a call. We'll have a beer. Um, they'd say, well, they, they tried a new, to go after a new audience. Well, obviously, that's not what happened. When it happens, um, going on about seven or eight years, no, where the studio knows the entire core fan base doesn't want it, yet it keeps going out, there is no conspiracy anymore. There is no tinfoil hat anymore. It proves they don't care about making money. Do you understand once, you know, if anybody has stumbled upon this video that doesn't run in our circles, once you realize that, do you understand the entire world breaks down? The world isn't what you thought it was. If, oh, don't they have to answer to shareholders? Why aren't, why isn't the stock going to zero? Why haven't all the shareholders, including the big mutual funds, that prop it up, which they're all on the same team, of course. That's why it hasn't, maybe all the smaller investors have all jumped ship. The not milk can hold any stock up to the whatever level it wants at any time. I was going to say with a push of a button. Well, no, that there's no button necessary with the AI that's running in the in the background. So, um, you know, maybe some of the smaller investors on Disney, and that's why it's been suffering. But with with any fool can see they don't care about making money; they care about pushing a message. So why wouldn't the Vanguard funds and the Majority funds and the other mutual funds jump ship unless they want to push that message too, which implies they're all on the same team. It's not a conspiracy anymore. I'm not sure what anybody, my friend Tony or the people you interact with, I'm not sure what they would say or how to, I don't know how they would justify this. But reality being what it is, um, I won't get the chance to ask them. I won't get the chance to talk to them about it. It just will never come up, or if I would like to bring it up, something else will happen, or they'll run away, or I, I don't know. I, I don't. It, this is the this world is. Um, we thought it was pretty strange doing what we did. Um, you know, mostly examining the fake events 2008 through 2012. We thought the world was pretty strange. Um, it's. I was going to say a hundred times stranger. Well, that's pretty accurate. Times multiplication. That's pretty severe. It's a hundred times stranger. Than, than we thought it was when we were when they were presenting fake events you know every few days, which they still do, but it's not it's not like it they do it in a different way today. It's not it's not the same. But anyway, guys, uh, if anyone's interested, Ed Harris, for big making a big deal out of it. For, ooh, early '80s movie, um, The Abyss in 4K. You know, like you can't go get your VCR tape. And your Betamax in your freaking attic, <laughs> just shove it in. Well, it's not going to be any different. Well, it's well, By the way, if somebody's yelling at me about the magenta, I can hear you, because if you look at the trailer when the when the when the aliens or whatever come up, it is somebody might be saying to me, Matt, it's another opportunity to push the magenta. A, a, a huge magenta a theme seems to run through the um, first contact, whatever you want to call it. By the way, um, it was basically the easiest path imaginable to start a YouTube channel, get it from 10,000 subscribers to about half a million. The window of opportunity on that was three or four years ago. And without basically any talent, well, a little bit, all you had to do was start a movie review 
uh, site or a movie reviewer uh, YouTube channel that bitched and complained about how bad movies were, bitched to complain about Disney and the other studios, and complained about the woke messaging, the social justice warrior, those types of themes, where the Not Nilk wants to create, wanted to create that camp. And uh, some over there, like the critical drinker and the way they do the presentation, they, they do have some talent. But, you know, like for Nerd, nerd Roddick, for example, uh, competent, but I've seen his channel go from like 150,000 subscribers to 800,000 or more. Or is he pushing? Uh, it's not that good. I'm sorry. Um, you were, I, my subscribers go down <laughs> every month. They do. I, I, haven't, I, I haven't gotten any metrics or, or any emails from Google, YouTube, which I think means there aren't any new subscribers. So they don't even email you. This poor bastard is, he, I'm not even going to, e they say, I'm not even going to email him. Because it went down. I, I don't think it's you're capable of getting an email saying, you know, 4 million minutes watch, whatever, subscriber total for the month, negative 50. I, I don't think they send that email. I don't know. But the window of opportunity, um, by the way, that's if you run ad revenue. Guys, you know, you all know I've never run an ad uh, ever, even going back to the old Texas shrugged days in roughly 2008. Never run an ad. Um People, be, there was monetization for even, quote, conspiracy talk for many, many years. It wasn't like it was always demonetized. That that happened, I don't know, maybe that happened in 2018 or 2017. It was completely monetized, never ran an ad. Just felt it was, um, well, you didn't need the money. Oh, oh yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, I, I did. Uh, I lived off my, my insurance company, 401k, for two years. Well, I was doing the brokerage business. That wasn't going too well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I could have, um, yeah, I could have used it. But um, anyway, just a reminder, um, you know, people throw me a few dollars uh, every so often. I appreciate that. Okay, guys, um, what's next to talk about? There's a whole list of stuff. I'm not sure what to do next. I'm just looking at my emails. Uh, back to the Holy Grail for a moment. Some people have said, Matt, it, it's this, the Holy Grail, Matt, it's this or that, or but material things, things of this world. No, okay, I'm pretty sure of this, okay, I really, I really am. Um, something that is pushed, we're not going to do the whole Holy Grail video all over again, but one minute or less, something that's pushed to such fame by and artificially by what we call not milk, how many stories, books, poems, movies, thousands? If you include uh, references in, in a book, or tens of thousands. Everyone, I think I might have said, other than somebody in a pygmy tribe, knows or has a general idea for themselves what the Holy Grail is. When something is this big, it is not a rare earth mineral or a thing of this world. It is not of, the, it's, it's showing a much larger meaning. One of the main things uh, in part two, the work, the worry about yourself activities, is to see that nothing of this place, nothing material in the scheme of things matters. Nothing. And, and it basically, okay, we, we, as when we're young people, we covet. What do we do? What, who do we covet, Clarice? <laughs> we, we covet what we see every day. We covet the same sports car that drives by us every day. And we, we, okay, then we, when we kind of grow out of that, but you get to the point where nothing of this material realm matters other than what, you know, the, the hard work we're here to do or the experiences we're here to have. A thing, a, no, there's no possible way. A thing in this world is the Holy Grail. So that that's kind of a message to several emailers all at once. Matt, how do you know if I, I'm I'm giving my opinion, but come on, the the Humpty Dumpties, the the uh, stuffed linens, the things that are so prominently carried through time by reality and by the minions because they have to. These are spiritual messages, like I don't know what what a synonym you want. Divine messages. They're not about this world. This world is a joke. In, the, in this big scheme of things. Not that we don't have hard work to do and we shouldn't do it. But 
like the woman's womb or whatever. It, it's not that, dude. Okay. Matt, you can keep coming back every few minutes saying it's not that. It, your argument's not very convincing. This argument's not very convincing. I hope I was more convincing in the uh, – in the. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit better when I'm doing – you know, I'm at the microphone. I'm not talking to a, a emerald green light. It'll probably switch to magenta on me by the end of the week. For this segment, guys, let me show you what Steven sent me. Um, normally, it would just get a, a Pootie Tang Award, <laughs> and that would be the end of it. But I, I appreciate what Steven sent in this case. We do need to talk about it. It's very interesting. I guess I'll just insert it now over what over over myself. And one was um, was it Pakistani International Airways with the shadow of the plane over. Uh, north and south, and another, another one, I don't know where the d- little drawing or diagram came from, but um, I'm, first when I look at this, now guys, you can imagine how many thousands and thousands of things I've seen or been sent over the course of at least 14 years. So usually it's it, it just goes back as a Pootie Tang Award, but I'm, I'm I, and, and that's what I was, I wasn't, I would have been nicer in terms of my email back to Stephen. Again, I appreciate what he sent here. That's the whole reason for this segment. And I'm going, you know, I don't know if I've ever seen this one. Pakistani International Airways. I've seen many, many things like it. And the other little, you know, poster board thing, I, I know I haven't seen. But whether I've seen it or not, the point is, it is similar to the recent discussions we're having on retrocausality or... Um, at least a, a backward ripple in time that causes uh, somebody without them knowing why they want to paint the World Trade Center, they bought, they paint the World Trade Center, um, a channeling or a backwards channeling of some kind. If it's not a retrocausality, is a backward channeling where an artist gets a premonition or an inspiration to do something, or oh, I'm going to paint the North Tower. Um, you know, is that that's a backward channeling? That is like that is very similar, to, in my opinion, to a retrocausality. So, just two examples I'm showing here based on what Steven sent in. But guys, the amount of these things um, related or an allusion of some kind to the event, it's so in the thousands at this point. And again, I'm like in the center of all this, seeing things come and go for many, many years that. It just, I love whenever there's a proof of fake world or proof at least of um, supernatural things going on in the world uh, way outside of our perception. Um, I love all those types of examples because it means the faker the world gets, the more real I become. You know what that means at this point, even though it's not said exactly the way it should be said. I don't need that to be real, but you know what I mean. It's I love it when reality just proves Whatever I already know about myself, whatever you already know about yourself, when reality proves it to us over and over again, like it's, I mean, maybe we don't need to have it proved to us anymore, but it's getting reinforcement is great news. I I love getting the reinforcement. The more it breaks down, the better it is for me. That's, that is not a rationalization. You know, I believe that's, that's my interpretation and that's, that's the best way to see it. It let it completely break down. That would be the best news of all time. It already has. Anyway, so, um, it's so unnatural the amount of um, advertisements or paintings or well, and somebody would say to address the other side of the argument, which I try to be fair and do that as much as I can. Matt, somebody taking a podium against you would say, well, the event happened. The event was so massive, then that assigns a degree of importance to all things that would have been considered trivial and unimportant if the event didn't take place in the first place. So the little poster board thing of a plane, go that's completely trivial and would have been forgotten about. It becomes relevant because of what happened. I hear you, but but no, okay? It's it, In terms of um, just the, uh, the ability, not the ability, the amount the towers were used in media, say even movies, it's not commensurate with other famous buildings. Uh, you, I, we've done this example before, but this is the best way to see it. And then you could take this example out and uh, extrapolate it in a million different areas. The amount of times, like King Kong in the 1977, Jeff Bridges was it? He, geeks that he's not at the top of the World Trade Center. He's, he's not at the King Kong is not at the top of the Empire State Building. It's modernized, so he's at the top of the World Trade Center, and. Again, every Matt, because he's down in that creepy plaza at the end and it ends with him falling in the plaza, 
Um, obviously, the men in black made a phone call. Okay, maybe. But how many times, you know, I'm not, how many times are you going to say it, Matt? Men in black making the phone call every single time doesn't work anymore. Um, there's other reasons that there's so many different times that the, the towers come through art, movies, and media. And see, the main point is the Empire State Building is more famous, was absolutely more famous. Um, the, the, the towers, the World Trade Center, much more famous today only because of what happened. Before it happened, the Empire State Building would have been three times as famous or five times as famous. Yet in art or media or movies or whatever, it does, it does not have the same prominence as the towers. So there's only two possibilities. Well, there's several, but two main categories. One is the men in black got on, got on the bat phone and called every single book writer and every single movie producer, which, you know, I think that does, just because I, I'm saying that's a first grade response, it doesn't mean it hasn't happened. I always have to say this. It's not one or the other. I think the, the, to um, enhance the spell or whatever they're going to do, I think they have, knowing what's going to happen, I think they have inserted it into certain art and media. But that doesn't explain most of it. I think it's more of a retro causality or a, a channeling to a degree where linear time seems similar. We've been over this a million times. It seems like the, this is the past and then Matt will stop and then this is the future, me just leaning forward. Well, no, it just seems that way. So uh, anyway, guys, um, the what, what Steven sent, they just keep coming and coming and coming, showing, and not just a, a, a drawing from a second grade class of the of the um, bot. We're talking about painting the World Trade Center. Not just, uh, it's it's the, you know, it's tattoo. It's, get play, get play. It, the planes are in, in, a, in that same, you know, and I know I'm an OPP person, can't do a sidebar. So thank you, Stephen, for sending that to me. This segment we'll call Not Nilk Creepiness, Invading Our Daily Lives. If you have a personal example of Not Nilk Creepiness getting in your business in your day-to-day -day interactions, please put it in the comments or send it in to me. This is from Jeremy, who lives in a shelter in Montana. No more details than that. Because of what we're talking about, the magenta, he says, well, this has been on the wall of the shelter. It doesn't seem to be an ad. I'm showing it to you now. I'm, I'm looking at it in a little tiny box. It doesn't seem to be an ad for anything. There doesn't seem to be a product. I'd ask Jeremy, what is, what do you, you know, there is some print kind of layered in the background. What's the point of this, Jeremy? But it is not no creepiness to the highest order. It says, eternity is at stake. <laughs> With this, with this kid washed out, and you're looking at it. Again, I'm just looking at a little box here. You, you can see it better than me. Um, this kid's washed out in magenta. It should Maybe the fine print or the layered print says, from Ray Kurzweil's perspective, eternity is at stake. As he tries to beat you towards whatever he's defined as the singularity. I was reading an email here from Gary, who uh, I've shared his at least one of his emails with you before. Uh, he shared some good things with me over the years. One just one little segment here got my attention, um, and he's pondering different things. He's saying, "Could they, could they, the creeps, see us, a certain type of incarnation, a uh, certain type of individual off the ship of fools? Could they see us as a threat?" And he does. He's not saying that for. She's pondering different things, but it is worth talking about because I don't think we've ever talked about it. Um, and I have no idea where this, this I just I re reread his, his email and I have no idea where this is going to go, but I think that this is some stuff that needs to be said we have never really talked about. Now, from the Not Nilk's perspective and its minions, whatever they understand or not understand about the creepy table and their role here, okay, we're, my view is very clear at this point that they're role players for us, basically. Um, I don't know if they understand that or not or any of them understand it, but they are inserted here as role players, just as Darth Vader needed to be a role player in Star Wars or the whole thing doesn't work. Now, if you don't agree with that, with this, we're, we're you know, in, at the first level of the elevator here, then we're gonna have no meeting of the minds as the elevator goes up. I'll try to be brief. I don't think the segment's gonna be more than five minutes. But um, 
you know, they might not be aware of that. Uh, first grade truthers, I think, would say they're not they don't they're not playing a role here. They they hijacked it. It's not supposed to be this way. I, I feel differently, as you know. No use reiterating that. I feel it's exactly as it should be. They're they're not more powerful than this place or whoever constructed it. Uh, if Satan exists from a Christian perspective in God's world, then God sent Satan in there to do to people that would learn something around So you understand my position on this. So no matter what you you the way, no matter which way you see it in this regard, back to the original point from Gary or what he was pondering, not what he was telling me. Do they see us as a threat across the board? No, not at all. No matter no matter which way you see this, they don't see us as a threat. If even if they see us as a a more advanced incarnation, at this, I think they they have such they've proven to themselves. They've patted themselves on the back so many times. They've proven to themselves at this moment they are in such complete quote control from their perspective. I'm not assigning any um, any mental imagery to that. From their perspective, I believe, and, and look, and they they look and see what they did to the world for see the V me in 2020, and I think they're still patting themselves on the back. I don't even think they understood how uh, it, it all could have come together so perfectly for them. So whether they see us as a a more advanced incarnation, or they know who we are, or know who they themselves are. Um, you know, uh, what the heck? Looking at my window through the reflection of the Mac, the black part, complete magenta. Um, 100% magenta, the the window. I can see the tree, uh, the, reflect, the way you would see a reflection in an old television set. You know, that they were like domed out. Very strange. Um Maybe it's always been there, always been there. I'm going to pay attention to that, and it hopefully won't distract me for the rest of this video. But no, they don't uh, They don't see anything as a threat. Um, I think they would say, you know, we've never been more firmly in place. And, can, can, and, and let them do what they want, whatever. I mean, I, I don't care. Who cares? Who cares? I don't think, I think they still, per the rules here, they need to operate behind a trick. As I've said, I don't think Satan's going to pick anybody up and throw anybody in the trunk. So if they if they violate the basic rules, which some would argue they already have, then they've they've lost everything. We've won. I mean, you know, they, they, there's still basic rules rules here that do seem to be violated. But no, Gary, they they don't they don't they don't see anything as a threat. I I don't you know this. They operated differently in the past. It just was a more professional presentation they didn't take the the risks some would say it's like they're behind schedule or they're rushing uh, or the the finish line is so close that they're taking bigger bites i always say bites of the shit sandwich but bites of the i'm not i'm going to get away from that because there's like a weird amount of scatological reference going on in some of the things i watch like i can't watch a movie reviewer without like somebody saying wet fart or it's just really weird and the not milks in love with that i'm going to get away from from using the s word i'll drop f's but i'm going to get away i just something really weird about it i can't watch a critical drinker without a, a scatological reference it's it's not funny it's just it's to me it's not funny because it's um the not milk is love is in love with that for some reason um we'll, we'll I was going to say we'll talk about it some other time, but we won't. We won't talk about it some other. The, a gigantic magenta window staring at me through the reflection in the Mac. Has it always been there? You, I don't know. I've been talking. I don't know. And it's not. I'm not. Guys, it is. It is like literally. If I turned around, somebody's shining magenta light on everything. Um, no other color. Whatever. Who cares? John, in an email, um, has asked me, have I ever looked into, or he's given me a link to what's called, uh, in Judaism, Yetzer Hara is a congenital incon inclination to do evil. Um, and he gives me a link, Yetzer Hara, related to the Kabbalah. Um, okay, first off, just to, just to answer John, um, he's talking like it's a, it's a frequency, or an inclination, or... or See, 
the creeps are, in my opinion, the creeps are role players. It's not, they, they are on their own frequency, but it's not like there's this frequency that they're going to, they, they have this inclination to do evil. They pick up the evil frequency. I believe they're role players, their incarnation. I believe a lot of what um, Tony told me about a different type of spiritual incarnation as the Henry Kissinger types here, the, the role players to basically, you know, if you want to break it down in just a few words, to be assholes. That's their role here. Um, it, our role is to learn something from it, notice, and to do the worry about yourself activities. It's not an inclination to do evil per, per a frequency. It's the, their, their exact role. And whatever this, I mean, that I don't think this... Yes or Hara concept would would acknowledge what I'm saying. They're a totally different type of incarnation or entity. It's just basically saying a general uh, definition in Judaism. Yes or Hara is the, and I'm not I'm not going to try to pronounce it like they do. I, I can't do that <laughs> stuff. I I can't do it, man. Um, like whatever. It's the congenital inclination to do evil. Well, that's this bullshit. Bull, people in general do not have a genital no con congenital inclination to do evil they don't they, they have the congenital whatever the heck that means i guess in the natural sense to they, the, to do good not to do evil that's why 99 percent of government is unnecessary is that going to get a hate the beach uh tag uh, if i say 99 percent of government is completely unnecessary and the hardcore truthers, all of it, oh, no, not all of it is unnecessary. It is nice to have a road that runs from New York City uh, to Los Angeles. That road can't be built without, you know, government and some sort of eminent domain and water pipes so you could flush your toilet in New York. I mean, some hardcore truthers are like, there, there is a role at, at some level, but it's always better to be local, of course. But you do need some national level to facilitate a road. That goes across, or or an electric, uh, you know, whatever electricity uh, that runs state to state. Just some basic things like that. But now, of course, ninety nine percent of it, of its waste, of its job of the hut uh, nature, could go away. Of course, so the if, if that's the case, and the, the whole point here is, if ninety nine percent was, there is no congenital inclination to do evil. You just start screwing your neighbor because you now you can. Come on, that's that's ridiculous. If anything, it would be, you know, just you, you get government. It'd be like a posse comentatus, whatever the heck that means. It's just if one neighbor on this block of 50 houses starts screwing people over, well, then 30 houses get together and, you know, get some uh, tools out of the tool shed and go have a talk with the neighbor. And they don't, nobody else needs to be involved. And I don't mean to, you know, tie him to a tree. Or I'm just saying, you know, have a talk that, you know, there's no, there won't be any more of this or you'll see us again you know that, that that it's all everything should be handled locally that possibly can this whole inverse world does it the opposite the federal government has its sticky tentacles and regulating absolutely 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 everything there's no bigger uh bastardization than the 10th amendment to the united states bill of rights uh no bigger violation of law or natural rights or natural law or any whatever you however you want to break it down no bigger violation the tenth amendment says this this little tiny book here called the constitution we'll, we'll just we'll outline the 10 things the government's allowed to be involved in and the tenth amendment says if it's not outlined here then it can't be involved but um it's involved in absolutely everything and when there's congressional hearings on a replacement Supreme Court justice. It's so ridiculously pathetic how half of the the time spent is on, and the, even the people on CNBC, it's like, oh, this is the segment they're going to grill them on constitutional law. Like, and people, oh, they, yeah, any justice that's going to represent me on my side of the aisle needs to know constitutional law. It's, a, it's a, just a show. It's a joke. Constitutional law, there's been tens of thousands of, of uh, violations to the Bill of Rights, not not through my own interpretation, just blatant violations. Where the Bill of Rights says this can't happen, and it just and it's that it happens. So anyway, sorry to go on a side tangent, but um, 
put everything that basically ba just to say one other thing based on this uh this you know, every being in matt you can't even talk what's the matter with you involved in what we've been involved in this kabbalah stuff comes up every so often that what's those things called the little balls you bounce your ball, play your ball, your games, Jordan Maxwell, you know, let us run over here. You go outside, you bounce your ball. Uh, the the sephirum, sephirat, I don't understand none of it. I don't want to, I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. It never will make any sense to me. And I don't believe real people need one bit of it. Um, I've looked into it over the, you know, on and off over the years. These balls, these 10 balls. And uh, what is the only thing that made sense to me a little bit? was somebody put it this way that man cannot directly understand god there's you know but there's a huge separation so the way this person put it or whatever i read it was uh, it needs to be like ele electricity that comes from the power plant needs to be stepped down many times before it gets uh to your outlet for example or whatever you plug in your fl flashlight recharge we just the flashlight would blow up it needs to be stepped down that's why those boxes you know exist on many you know there's that big black box on whatever you plug in it it steps it down to a more manageable current so it doesn't fry the circuitry of whatever you're plugging in and the person put it that you just tackle the, the sephira somehow guide you this tree of life path to understanding god and i again i can't speak to it your, your divine nature in relationship with god i don't know i don't want to know anymore please don't waste a comment on, on that um but the way you put it, like you it's you just do it one piece at a time and i disagree with all all of it so you understand where i'm going with this but then it, it's you step it down so man can understand his divinity and oneness with god or something and through these steps through the the sephira or whatever it's called and again i don't I don't understand none of it. I don't want. I don't want to understand any of it. It makes no sense to me. It is, it's. I'm not. I'm not gonna. There's people that take it quite seriously, and I don't. I don't. Whatever. We'll just keep it. At, keep it at that. But um, what is the uh, the point? The point is um, what I've said many times. We're not here to know God. The main point. The, you know, we're not here in this place to know God. You know, I've said this a lot, but I. It's a very strong point that I, I firmly believe in that is it is a you know not the basis of this channel but it is very Im important tenet here i mean everybody's running look at this place animals are animals and squirrels are killing each other and you have the, this violence over here and this debauchery over here and this this horrible this war and all this this is not the place to know god oh, everybody's running around trying to say have a relationship with god what this is the place, you know, I've said it many times, but it's so important. Maybe you knew God, or if you're a Christian, Jesus, you, you knew, you all knew each other so well before this. This isn't the place to, I have a relationship with God. What? No, it's the place to, it's not, not to completely forget, you know, based on what your religion is or your faith, but not to try to get closer to God. I guess I've been repetitive. I've said a lot of this over the past six months. If you want to get closer to a boyfriend or a girlfriend do you do you finally move into the city where they live or do you move halfway around the world world to bali indonesia you, where you you sound a little far away static or you know where, where i'm calling from bali indonesia you wh oh you you're on a vacation no i moved here what we were just getting close i moved here to be close to you is that why uh, uh, you come here to know god is there's a is god right okay matt repeating a thing don't improve it yeah, well, this is such a big point. I'd love to talk about, we're going to talk about this a lot in the future. I forgot to mention this earlier. It should have probably been the first segment. As a follow-up, guys, to the video I made where we don't have any time to do anything, we don't have any time to get things done, where it's not just not milk piling on busyness or tasks, it seems like a, a, a shrinking or a condensing of time. And some I, I mentioned before, but I'll say it one more time, I was surprised how many people agreed with me. That was a pretty weird and way out thing to say. Um, and, and every time I do say that, a lot of people, more people agree with me than I thought, even with the Magenta presentation, um, more people agreed with me than I expected. But again, people, we're on the same frequency. We're going through the same things in reality. Matt, stop being surprised, right? So uh, one other follow-up to that was um, 
and I'm not when I'm going to say the way I felt or or perceived reality on on New Year's Day in the morning. I'm not this type of person with these types of perceptions. You know, I don't see auras. Uh, there's many people that I've been associated with that do have these abilities. Okay, I want to be very clear that I. I generally don't, but somebody's yelling at me going, Matt, you've, you've developed a lot of them over the years, and I, I, I believe I've, I'm getting better, but I'm not one of those people. If, if I just I want to downplay my abilities here. But something felt different to me. On It was just the first part of New Year's Day. It was the weirdest feeling. And I'm not asking, did you feel it? And I'm not, I don't think it was some ripple that went through time. I, I don't know what it was. It, it don't, don't read more... Don't read into it too much. I'm not saying that it was any. There was some metaphysics that was different for everybody. No, I, just my own personal thing. Um, the first New Year's Day, I've never seen it quieter. It was just weird. You too, right? All is quiet on New Year. It was just eerie how you go outside into the driveway and you know almost no cars, no buzz. There was it was just eerie. There was nothing going on, and I went inside. And I just felt like I had. I don't know. I, I I just had time to do everything. I, I didn't, and I, I there wasn't this like big stressful weight, like to keep up with stuff. That that's I guess that's one of the big things. Like, oh, you know, if I don't do these two or three cat plates that are sitting here now, it'll pile up and it'll really be a problem later, and then it'll get hard and you have to scrape it. And I just it was weird. It was only from like the morning to I don't know one o'clock, or from in the afternoon, three, four, five on New Year's Day. Um, it, it felt like any other day. It was felt somewhat uh, heavy. Um, I don't know. I don't know why that would have been. And, and it, again, don't. It was probably just me. I just I noticed it. It was a very strange experience. I just wanted to tell you about it. When I talk to Greg on the phone, um, this topic comes up about once a month. How do people keep up financially? And it, each conversation we have will be a little bit different. For example, like average home prices, the top 15 year to year, Queens, New York, and Brooklyn, New York, continuously ranks. <laughs> As, go watch, go watch Trading Places. Not Trading Places. Sorry, um, Eddie Murphy and uh, Arsenio Hall in Back to the Future, in Coming to America. Coming to America. Go watch it. That's Queens. That's what it. Sh- I mean, obviously, that's not what it looks like today. But that was Queens, uh, Astoria, Queens. Right? You could have picked up a, the average home prices near a million dollars. And yeah, it's, it's gotten nicer, but I mean, it's, a, it's, 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 it's so out of control. How did it get out of control? And we're not just going to talk about home. Well, this five-minute segment, we'll do something else. Not just home prices. Like, trash bags are, I don't know, a big thing of trash bags. It's like 12 bucks. For trash, for trash. How do people keep up? Greg and I, we, we, where does the money come from? Okay, we I don't. We we understand certain ways the system floods the the markets with money and props things up and subsidizes and bails out. Yeah, okay, no, no reason to comment on that. But how it works so perfectly is supernatural. It's not. It's not normal. I mean, even when C the V uh, 2020, all these different industries are decimated because people stay home. And the first great truther will say, well, there were bailouts. So, well, yeah, we know that. Uh, but there should have been, it's not, how could it be so perfect? The world just kind of went on. I mean, there there should have been, uh, don't you hear all these stories about kitchen nightmares and these the kitchen, uh, the TV shows where, they're leveraged up with a million dollars of debt to start this restaurant. When, I guess, I don't know, in this area, outside of Philadelphia, 2020, into the mid part of 2021, I mean, nobody went to a restaurant. There should have been, based on what we thought the world was, you know, Greg and I will just talk, like, how is this happening? Like, it's supernatural. Okay, there's a ton of restaurants in this Exton, Pennsylvania area, down through Devon and King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. I mean, I don't know, a hundred major restaurants from Applebee's to um, local places, the ship in uh, down here converted to a brew pub. So based on 2020 CV, come on, every all these TV shows tell you how leveraged up everyone is. 20 of them, 30 of them, 40 of them should have gone out of business. One or two? 
three? I, not, it just doesn't make any sense. Okay, that's that's one aspect. How do people, in terms of all the inflation or the, in the shrinkflation, soon you'll get you'll get one paper towel. It'll be a it'll be a cardboard roll. Well, this is this is for um, sneezing, but it's something similar. There, there will be maybe one sheet. One. What, what did Elaine ask for? Can you spare a square or a fold? Or you'll get one. There'll be cardboard. Maybe it'll just be the cardboard. It'll say you know blow in this or. or um, how do people? So Greg and I are like, okay, well yeah, the salaries of the of the workers are, but in terms of how leveraged up they are, they all still have two cars. They all still send the kids to private school. Um, you would think the salaries would have gone if you work for a big company. Your average salary would be 150 to 200 thousand to keep up, and that's what the middle managers are making. But that's not what the average salary is. It's gone up with inflation. But how are people? How are they doing it? It just some on this list that I was looking at earlier. The have av- highest average home prices, Manhattan, of course. But that's to be expected. Of course, it's why is it still desirable to live in New York, especially after? 2020 and CV. I mean, that would have been a hell um, with, with nothing. I mean, these New Yorkers, you know, their whole life is about going out and doing stuff. And that's why you live there to be basically shut in for six to eight months. I, I'm, Brooklyn is on the list. Um, I can see San Diego being on the list. Okay, fine. But Los Angeles, almost a million dollars for the average home price in Los Angeles. Uh, Orange, look, I lived in Los Angeles proper off the 110 freeway, the Via Marisol exit. Los Angeles, I was ready to quit if they didn't transfer me to San Francisco. Uh, it's a, it, it's horrible, if you ask me. If yes, you're multi multi millionaire and you've got some, you know, like they they depicted it in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Leonardo DiCaprio up there in the Hollywood West Hollywood Hills with a little gated community and little, you know plants separating you from your neighbor and it's nice weather and you're up in the hills that's nice i guess but most of la is just horrible that was stuff i wouldn't pay i wouldn't pay anything i was i was going to say i wouldn't pay ten thousand dollars i i wouldn't i wouldn't be there if somebody gave me a house for free i wouldn't go i don't i what else was on the list um well brooklyn and brooklyn and and queens did surprise me in the top 10 or 15 list for the whole country, go watch Coming to America. Look, Simi, a country that is so free, you could just <laughs> dump your friggin' trash <laughs> right out there. She dumps her trash right out the window. It's okay. It's it's mad. It's improved. It's all. But where'd the money come from? We know where it came from. Okay, we know that we know the Fed pumps in trillions. That's off books. That isn't reported anywhere. But how is it done so perfectly? That's what's that's what's supernatural. Yeah, any first grade truther can can see the Fed quote prints money and injects money that they don't have that's not on the fed balance sheet that's not reported to cnbc we know that obviously um all these businesses would have failed they're getting injections off books but it's so perfectly done that is not milk that is um things here uh going on that that just defy comprehension it is fascinating and again it doesn't doesn't have anything to do with us and uh, more my videos do have to be a little bit more about uh the self i've been doing more on the self work the part two of the book than just constantly studying reality not milk and it, it needs to be the balance needs to be a little bit a little bit better but we've been over the you know you know what to do for part two the work the appreciation the, you know i can't every little tree hugging example that i have do you really want to hear about that Every time it happens to me, uh, every time I go out, I mean, it was just, I'll, I'll give you an example. This doesn't make for a channel. you be like, this is bullshit. Oh, he's going to do this tree hugging thing again. I've, I'm done with this quantum of conscious son of a beach. Uh, let me just tell you what happened. You know, we'll do a little bit more of this and not much more because this is horrible guys, but, but it's a personal thing for me. And w- you need to find these and you probably are, you guys are. I was out collecting up twigs for the wood stove sticks. Uh, to light the wood stove it was getting low i need you know I usually keep two weeks three weeks dry on hand it was getting too low I'd always have backup in reserve and i the uh, there's a holly bush that was just full of um 
berries, the red berries. And I don't like doing it this way, but I, I basically was like, shame on you, Matt. I mean, is this thing, if this has buried the year after, and you've never noticed it, it was just beautiful. And why aren't the birds eating it? I thought, and I, I, I've touched them and I, it was, and I just, but this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. I have moments in my day where I'll say, if nothing else happens, the day is worth it. If nothing, and it's usually something with my cat or, you know, something that happens. I'm, you know, I'm thrilled to be watching Gouda here. Um, you know, as Pam is off doing whatever for her corporation. Um, and, and I just say to myself, if nothing else happens good, this day's already been worth it. And it's, the, this is, you know, the type, the part two of the work doesn't make for the most exciting <laughs> YouTube channel. This asshole's going to be talking about looking at, if, you know, crying over a bury bush. I'm out of here. All right. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll make it more exciting, but there needs to be a better balance. Um, thanks for listening, guys. I will see you tomorrow, Saturday. Guys, earlier I talked about the fact that I never ran an ad on YouTube, and I started thinking, I am going to run an ad right now. We're going to do, I'm going to do a commercial. I'm going to run an ad right now for this craft macaroni and cheese. And some of you might be saying, well, there's no way that they're sponsoring you. There's no possible way that they're not. Of course they're not. They want nothing to do with me, of course. I, I'm still going to run the ad. I, I'm, I'm running the ad to piss them off. I'm offended by the box quite frankly. I, I'm not joking. The taste you love. No artificial flavors, no artificial preservatives, no artificial dyes. See, check boxes at the bottom. Check, check, check. Really? Um, so you, you've had, you know, you know what their slogan should be? Our chemicals taste better than your chemicals. You could sit this box on a shelf probably for 150 years. And the powder that would be in the package, you'd pour, if you could get the noodles back and soak them in water, then boil them up and you pour the powdered chemical cheese sauce or whatever. It's a powder. It's a powder of some kind. I think it'll last longer than a Twinkie. A hundred years from now, you pour your powder and you mix it all together and you, you probably would eat it without and still live. Um, there's no possible way. <laughs> it could be natural products. Um, natural, I mean... No artificial flavors, preservatives, or dyes. Really? This is my, this is my magnifying glass. I got um, I, I, for ticks. I, I've had, well, I don't know, 10 to 12 deer ticks in me. I've gotten them all out. I haven't gotten Lyme disease. Living around here in Pennsylvania, it's deer tick central. Uh, you know, we'll talk about that some other time. If you if you get them out, you, they can be embedded. If you get them out slowly and keep them alive, um, they have to be in you for quite a while. Uh, for the Lyme disease threat. Um, we'll talk about that later. Um, wheat flour, durum flour, niacin, ferrous, ferrous sulfate, iron, thiamine, mono, mono nitrate, which they point out is vitamin B1, like it's supposed to be healthy for you. Oh, riboflavin, B2, point, what is this? A list of all that's healthy. Folic acid, cheese sauce, milk whey, milk fat, milk protein concentrate, sodium tri phosphate <laughs> contains less than 2% of tapioca flour. Pfft, who cares about that? Citric acid, lactic acid from your muscles, sodium phosphate, calcium phosphate with paprika, turmeric, and ana anato added for color. Enzymes, it just says enzymes. It doesn't say what they are. It just says enzymes. What does that mean? Enzymes. From where? From the bottom of my toilet bowl? There, my toilet bowl has enzymes. Cheese culture. <laughs> I'm doing, and you know what? I demand, I demand to be paid by craft. We're going we're gonna to change it up right now. One minute or less, guys. Our chemicals eat craft macaroni and cheese. Their chemicals taste better than the other guy's chemicals. And on the back it says, what does it say? There's this big thing here. Even more reasons, even more chemicals to love it. <laughs> this box of Kraft macaroni and cheese dinner may look simple. It, with that list of ingredients, it's not simple. But it actually contains some extraordinary things. Yeah, chemical compounds that a primordial man couldn't even comprehend. Inside, you'll find happy childhood memories. There ain't no fucking happy childhood memories in here. There's nothing but indigestion. 
elbow macaroni, gooey, cheesy goodness. You know what, Kraft? You know, I was going to say you should be ashamed of yourself, but I'm, I'm looking. I'm actually, this is a real ad. They haven't asked me to do it, but I'm demanding payment. And I demand to be signed up as a spokesperson, just like Flow and Progressive, for your chemicals. I look forward to hearing from you soon, Kraft.